stroke off. <laughs> we're uh, we're back after small technical issues. <laughs> How's Yeah, not too bad. Itching to get back on track. We get we get going on Sunday, don't we? Uh, going down to Sebring for a couple of days. Uh, but uh, yeah, it'd be nice to finally get get you sorted and signed up um, in the season. A few few changes uh, in in the driver lineups. A couple of guys, you know, leaving Ferrucci and a couple, you know, a couple of others moving around. Palou moving over to Ganassi. Um, but it's nice, nice that you've got full season, right? What are you, what are you looking forward to most? Uh oh, I can hear you. Still technical issues. Technically, both nights. I can still hear you. Still counts. New, it's the new year. Well, it's not 2021 when every when you would imagine everything uh, would go wrong that can go wrong, right? Okay. <laughs> See if we can hear James. We can hear James. Lee. There he is, kind of somewhere. Kind of somewhere. <laughs> And I'm echoing, and I'm echoing. Can they, can, they, can, they, can they hear me? People are trying to People talk in. People are trying to talk in. Well, Darren, can you well, hear Darren, me? Darren, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. I'm like, sorry, I'm like trying to read the comments to see if anybody's uh, letting us know. Letting us know. I can hear you, Phil. How are you doing, buddy? How are you doing, buddy? I'm well, buddy. I'm well, buddy. I'm well. Good deal. I'll be rock. Good deal. I'll be rock. I'm sitting here admiring, sitting here admiring this slideshow, this slideshow you guys, you guys put together. together. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Giving, giving Genesis, Genesis a bit of love. And I'm also, I mean, Dalton, no, no offense, I'm, I'm glad it's not just me that's having a technical problem. <laughs> even, even logging on 10 minutes early to make sure everything was running well, it wasn't, and we were a few minutes late because of me. It's, uh, my, my, my podcast, my off-track podcast, Gremlins follow me around wherever I go, it seems. 
So, so is that, that, is that, that what, tell us a bit about that. What, 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 what is that podcast? That podcast? That's, uh, that's, uh, you and, you and Rossi? Rossi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's, so it's, it's, it's called Off Track, track with Rossi, Rossi, and, and uh, you, can, you, can, you get it anywhere you, you listen to podcasts or on, or on, uh, on, uh, on Sirius on XM, XM on, on Saturdays. We release on Thursdays. And yeah, yeah. I mean, it's called Off Track because it is just that. It gets irreverent and completely random very regularly. Last this past episode. So this, this week, this week we had we on, had on um, um, I guess it'll I guess it'll 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 it'll, it'll, it'll launch, launch tomorrow. tomorrow. I could hear. I could hear. A guy that guy the, the president, the, uh, president, the national, the national hot dog and sausage. Hot dog and sausage. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> And that's, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's a real that's thing. A real that's thing. a real. It's a real uh, job. Job that that, 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 that particular that person holds. Person holds. And, uh, and we learned uh, a lot. We learned a lot about, about hot dogs and sausages and. Sausages and, sausages and, and uh, about, uh, about, about, about. Well, it came well, about. It came that's about, a great question. Great question. Great question. And it came about. Came about because, about because I think I was on Twitter or something like that. I don't know how I tripped how I tripped across this. Across this. Thing where, thing it where this entity this that called entity itself called National, Hot Dog, National Hot, Dog Hot, Dog Hot Dog Council had decreed, had decreed that anybody over, that anybody the, age over the age of 18 was not allowed, not allowed to put ketchup, ketchup on their hot dogs. And, right. and exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so I called BS, I called BS on an episode, on an episode of, our of our show, and somebody, and somebody on Twitter, on Twitter, Twitter, one of our fans, tagged this guy, guy that's the guy, president, that's of president of this of council this that made this outrageously bogus claim. And, uh, and, uh, and so he replied, and so he replied, and replied and said, well, don't hate, let's have a conversation about it. We said, absolutely, let's have a show on the show, and let's chat. I love it. I love it. So we talked through that and many other hot dog related issues. And questions. And questions. Uh, uh, the biggest one, the of biggest course, one, whether a hot dog, whether is, a hot dog is a sandwich or not. Oh my! Oh gosh. my! God. So yeah. true racing, so true topic. racing topic. That's, that's brilliant. brilliant. That's brilliant. Yes. Yes. We cover. We, cover, we try to cover we try at least cover five minutes of racing, and then and 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 just completely, just completely go, off track. go off track. I love it. I love it. Yes. Yes. Because 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 Alex, 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 he's not he's not what people, what people I, I, think I think see on the race track or at least on the TV. Let's say when he's getting he's getting interviewed or whatever. Whatever. Is 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 I don't know how to describe him. Right. You know. You know. No, not, the, not the cold, 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 cold. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's pretty you know, serious, right? Serious, right? Serious, right? Serious, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry,
kind of scary, right? <laughs> yeah. Pa power slave. But do not know you two fellow Canucks, right? Tell us, come on, there's got to be some communal, like, career path or stories. Maybe we've had more things in common than you two, though, James, maybe. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there. I'm sure there's more uh, more in common between Dalton and I. But I, I I'm glad you said that because we'll get to that in a sec. I do want to interject quickly with a, with a quick story. I was uh, I was home uh, in Toronto for the holidays, and and we and we were sitting around the dinner table, you know, after a glass of wine or two, and reminiscing about old racing stories. And my dad, I don't. We somehow we started talking about a one GP. And my dad brought up that test that you and I did at Pembury when I was sort of auditioning for the ride. Oh, my God. And, uh, and this is, and Darren, I got to be honest with you, man. He tells this story all the time. I don't know why. He just loves this story. You know, <laughs> I love your York, old man. Oh, yeah. Fellow Yorkshireman, you know. And ah. so he, uh, we went to the, like, cafeteria or whatever for lunch that day. And whatever they served for lunch, whatever. And then they had I dessert. See. Yeah. And it was something, something with custard, right? <laughs> and so we go up to get dessert. And like the three of us are standing in line, and and the lady behind the counter says to you, she says, "Do you want custard?" And you look at her, and you go, "Oh, extra custard." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And so, and my dad, you just remember that that moment just stuck with him, and he just he loves just occasionally dropping the line, extra custard. <laughs> Oh, I'll have to I'll have to mention it to him next time what I see like him. The, 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 the stuff you have yeah. in the teeth, like 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 clotted cream or something like that kind of custard or like ice cream, because like here, here they call it custard no, ice I'm, cream. No, so it's like, proper custard. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's it's the whole own yeah. realm of creamy dessert Fine. goodness. Oh. But yeah, so uh, so yeah, Dalton and I, well, I imagine share a lot in common. I mean, we came up largely the same way. What what was your well, home good, kart though, track? Which, I think it was the same as you, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we raced at the same kart track, came up through the road to Indy. I mean, I took, I took a more exploratory route, uh, because, you know, when I when I was coming up, the the open wheel world was still split, right? And and I was on the champ car side of the of the split. So I spent a couple of years in the Atlantic series, and then everything merged and and switched over to lights. So, uh, so I spent a, a few more years swimming around level and, uh, uh, and came up, but yeah, I mean, I think we'd, we had very similar paths in a lot of ways. Well, so an, an, an interesting way in which we kind of cross paths when I was kind of making the jump from carts to cars was when you were doing the, the Hinchtown shootout back in the day. Remember that at the DDT right. track at most port and it was the, that year it was me uh, Matthew DeLeo and Nick Latifi were in that all in that group that did the Hinchtown shootout thing, which is basically Darren was like, "Hey, look," or uh, James, if, if you want to explain, it's basically a you know program to kind of help Carters get their toe into you know the Ooh. world. Yeah, so so I got my my racing license at a place called the Bridgestone Racing Academy, um, which is it has subsequently become. Uh, uh, a Skip Barber school, but we didn't have Skip Barber in Canada at the time. So that's that's where Canadians would go and get their race license. And so when I was in lights, and I, I always wanted to be a guy that gave back to the racing community in Canada. And um, when I was in lights for a couple of years, I, I was working with Brett Goodman, who's the owner of the, the driver development track there at Most Sport and ran that school. And uh, we picked with, you know, the help of, of some friends of mine in the carding world, we picked 10 carters each year. And, uh, and brought them out for a one-day shootout. And, you know, the winner got to do a free uh, school to get his uh, or her racing license to kind of move up into cars. Okay. And so I did that for a few years. And, and Dalton was, uh, was one of our esteemed, uh, esteemed Steve participants Joker. one year. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was great fun, man. It just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that we weren't able to keep it going. Um, it's something I definitely want to do again. And, uh, you know, now it's, a, now it's a Skip Barber school, that, that facility, mm -hmm. uh, but the same owner's still there. So they, we might have the, 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 the resources and wherewithal to kind of get it started again. So I think it'd be, I think it'd be fun to do it again. I think that's, that, that's the, you know, I think everybody, the resources, right? Motor racing, you don't, people I don't think realize it's, it's not necessarily very self-funding. 
like <laughs> some like some sports, uh, you know, like a like a, an NFL team or an, MB, an MLB team. You know, they sell jerseys, they sell tickets to their stadiums, whereas motor racing all the way up through the ladder um, has 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 to be funded by somebody. And every, I think everybody wants to give back. I'm glad I'm glad you did. And uh, you know, I would I was you know I wasn't in it long enough to to really make a a long contributing effort back to the UK guys or whatever, you know, I um, try to now give back to people like Dalton and my other drivers yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I always thought it'd be kind of neat to go back and like, even, you know, like, like going back to Goodwood and just doing a partnership with them, like for, for, for like a race weekend or something, right? Where you're like, you know, that's sponsor one of their races. Well, dude, what, gonna be, be there to help what, out. what I want to do is, I, I want to get a series going back, like the SRFKC, like when the Sonoka Ron Fellows mm -hmm. Championship was running, you know, and you know Ron Fellows, sport Canadian sports car legend, mm -hmm. won Le Mans, won Daytona, won Sebring, won it all. Um, you know, he's one of the owners up at Most Sport now. He had a, a great relationship with Sonoka at the time, big longtime sponsor of his, and they had this thing called the Sonoka Ron Fellows Karting Championship. And there's an iteration of it that still exists, but the I don't think the again. This, I don't think the same resources are behind it. You know, I think Sonoka no. was putting a fair amount of money into it, and uh, and it showed. But it, it made this awesome series that it, it like I think it helped produce a, like a, a cool wave of, of young Canadian drivers because you had this series that everybody wanted to be a part of. It didn't matter if Goodwood was your home track or Hamilton was your home track or Sutton or Innisfil or even some of the guys in Quebec. We got everybody to come together. There was prize money. You know, you could win 500 bucks to win a go-kart mm. race. And, like, yeah, fine, that's only buying you a set of tires. But, like, to be 12, 13 years old and be winning a check, like a prize money check, that's one of the coolest things ever, you know? Yeah. And, um, and you know, you, you did interviews, and you just, just gave everybody such a, a good feel for, like, kind of what it can, you know, that, what that next step's like. Not obviously what it's like at this level, but what that next step's like. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I've always wanted to get back and, and get involved again in the karting world and, and kind of help out. And, you know, when, when things slow down on my side and I have a bit more, bit more spare time, that's certainly something I, I want to get yeah, involved that's in. A, that's, a, cool. that's a great idea. And like, you know, thinking back, some of the best memories that I've had in racing were like at, at the go-kart track with my family, with, you know, like mom and dad, it's always been a family thing for us. And then just all all the friends you make in that in that world. I'm I'm, I'm still friends with all, a lot of the guys that I that I used to race with. So it's a cool thing to, to be part for of. Sure. For sure. And and even for an for an old boy like me, you know, when it was 30, 40 years ago, uh, shit, thirty five years ago when I started or whatever, right? It was exactly the same, right? Just a lot of kids just running around a track. Dad's trying to get them back in to get in the go kart because they're about to go race, but they thought you're all. And we're, I've still, like you say, though, I think I've still got some yeah. of my best buddies are still, you know, pulling out on Instagram some old photos of, <laughs> you know, it's a lot more, it's a bit more professional yeah. now than back Maybe in the that day, you know. But... Your trailer can only have one axle for the, for this, for this go-kart series. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen. Okay, not going to happen. The trailer can only have one axle. It can only have one chassis. You can have two motors. Yeah. Only a, only a 10 by 10 yeah. easy up. You know, well, it, it looks like an IndyCar paddock, or better than yeah. an IndyCar paddock. Some of those setups now, it does. It's like, it's 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 kind of a shame, right? Because when I started, so the you know I I was working with Daryl Timbers, who now runs Pro Racing Ontario, who I think you know you 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 might have raced against Daryl back in the day, right? I did. I raced against Daryl a bunch. And, you know, it was like his kind of way of doing it was you know we 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 didn't just throw tires at everything. It was like using old tires and like. You know, learning how to manage that side of it, and you know, me learning to do a lot of the stuff on on the cart myself, which I would have think is a great skill for you know kids to learn when they're when they're coming up. And you know, not, and I'm not saying that people don't do that now, but when you see teams with like you know multiple mechanics per go kart, right? It's it it just doesn't really go yeah. to the you know the kind of theme of what like it should all be. Right? So, yeah, thing. it it should be more grassroots. I I think. I mean, you just see see see. If, dude, if, I, if I tried to start, if I was if I was ten years old today and tried to start racing, I yeah. there's just no way I'd ever have competed at the karting level. No, nope. you know, and then and then I would never have, I would never have believed in myself enough to try to move up. 
you know, like it was, it, I, I just would have, full, it would have been a full stop there. You know, I would, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have left the Toronto Car Club. I just would have been pounding around there, you know, for the rest of my life. Because speaking of, I just never Toronto Car, car Club, like how much fun was the four stroke racing back in Ontario? Like that, 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 that is still best, like man. some of the best the racing best. ever. Eight horsepower. It's still, it still is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taught, taught you so much about momentum. You had to really time your passes because you didn't just have, you know, a boatload of torque and horsepower to get yourself out of it. You know, and it's funny because I, I did four-stroke racing. I did two-stroke racing. I did shifter car racing. I did it all. But I genuinely feel like the four-stroke stuff taught me the most. Really? was the most, yeah, it was the most beneficial. And I, the one thing I never did was Formula A, you know, the direct yeah, drive stuff. Um, I'm sure it's called something different now, but that, 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 that's that's all I all I did all I did back. That's all the kind of that was the that was kind of all there was back in the UK. Yeah. Uh, well, it was the UK and European and World Championship stuff that that, that was Formula like A. Pick so uh, and run with it and then drop it. And oh yeah, exactly. Before it, before but it those, it off. twenty thousand RPM <laughs> bombs. Right. But yeah. the guys that came out, the guys that were really good in Formula A seemed to do really well. Like that, it seemed like it was a similar sort of skill set, you know, a little bit, a little bit different, you know, because you're 5,600 RPM in our four stroke little Honda <laughs> lawnmower <laughs> engines compared to 20,000 in the Formula A motors. But uh, that was also a, that was also a cost thing. Um, I, but yeah, no, I mean, like, you know, I, I, I'm still a big believer in Formula 1600 as a, as a first first step into yeah. cars you know I again low horsepower again. teaches you yeah it teaches you momentum it really teaches you car control because those things slip and slide all over the place yeah. so uh i encourage every yeah every young driver i talk to I, I highly encourage them to not just jump into something with a carbon tub and, a, and paddle shifters and all the rest of it you know learn learn how to take care of equipment in a 1600 learn racecraft at that speed and at those kind of cars I think it's the I think it's awesome racing. Yeah, the the, the, the two races they, they they took a little bit of a dip when Formula Ford, um, well mainly the one uh, the Formula Ford festival uh, at Brands Hatch over in England used to be used to be huge like hundreds yeah. of countries heat, heat, heat races there used to be Americans coming over Brazilians and. Uh, it, it took a little bit of a dip with all these new Formula Fours, the carbon tubs, like you say, James, right? Um, the you know Formula Threes, all all that kind of stuff as these entry levels. So, but now, it, back in the UK, the Formula Ford Festival and the Walter Hayes yeah. Trophy, yeah. which actually started it off, is now more. These are actually nearly historic cars now, same tires that right. they used to with the grooves in them, but sixteen hundred motors with a carburetor. And it, it, it's like it's huge and it's great racing. I think uh, some a couple of Americans go over there yeah, every the year. USA scholarship, right? Sends sends a few guys. Yeah. But it's affordable and you can nearly do it yourself. Yeah. Nearly, For nearly sure. better than karting. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, I mean, I think I think you could probably do a season of the like uh, the Ontario Formula Four Championship, which was always a it was a really good yeah. championship. It was always very competitive. Mm. Uh, for probably less than what you could, like a top well, top sure level sure. you could, you know, yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah. But uh, I actually, I've got a, I've got a '91 Van Diemen. So yeah, it's probably it's considered vintage <laughs> now, which just makes me cry. <laughs> but um, it's, it was actually Greg Moore's wow. car, which is what's so cool. Yeah. yeah. So very. And you have, you have that. Yeah, I've got that back up in Canada, and I, I'm going to get it down here one day. Because you know the SBRA does that race at Indy at the GP oh, yeah. circuit, and and that I mean that thing qualifies. So you know I could go spend you know two grand for the weekend and, and go, go have an absolute we'll be, blast. We'll mechanic for him, won't we, Dalton? Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. your car for that <laughs> you maybe want Dalton engineering. <laughs> yeah, I'll be race. Mechanic. Dalton I'll, I'll can engineer. engineer. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team. You got it. You got us there, fella. <laughs> just beat us hot dog, hot dogs. It's all, it's all coming together now. <laughs> So exactly. So looking back a little, obviously we're, you know, we're we've just wrapped up 2020, and that was a, a year. We can say that. Um, you know, you you had a bit of an up, you had a bit of an up and down, but a bit of a different year than than a normal racing year. You know, you were you were in the car, you were in, in the commentary booth. Well, what was that like, kind of wearing multiple hats last year and you know working through that season? Yeah, it was it was strange, Dawn, for sure. I mean, I I kind of knew 
before anything went crazy in the world that my 2020 was going to be different. You know, I, I only had a three race deal. Um, I had done the deal with NBC to, to do some TV stuff. Uh, you know, that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky. I've had some cool opportunities to do in the past with champ car and a one GP. And I've been on the other side of that. Yeah. And so it was, it's always something I've, I've had an interest in and it's definitely something I want to explore when I'm done driving. And so we, we talked about, well, yeah, well, let's, let's get some experience now and, and see, you know, see how it goes. And so it was hard, you know, the, the, the first race weekend. So what, what was hard about it, man, was we showed up to St. Pete, right. To go racing. Yeah. And then the world <laughs> fell apart the Friday yeah. of St. Pete. And so yeah, I, sure. I, yeah. And so I showed up to St. Pete in this mindset that like, okay, I'm not driving a car this weekend. It's going to suck. Like St. Pete's one of my favorite races. My first win was there. Like, I love this place, but like, I just got to accept that I'm in a different role and, and whatever. And I was ready. Like I mentally prepared for that feeling, you know? And then the way the season played out, the first race was Texas, which is one of my three races. And then the next race was the GP, which was one of my races. And then the last race, the next, or sorry. And then, um, after the GP, you know, I'd been in the first two races of the season. And then we went to the, I think it was Road America was the next one. And I wasn't in it. And I was totally unprepared, you know, because I, I wasn't expecting to start the season. But then I kind of did start the season. And so we got to Road America. And it's like, well, no, I've been on track with these guys. And I've done this. Like, I want to keep going. And they're like, well, no, that's not how this works. So uh, switching gears that weekend was definitely a little bit of a challenge. But then. After that, it was fine, and you know, then we did the 500, which was great, and then went back and got to do a race in the booth when Townsend was uh, in in uh, doing his IMSA duties, uh, was in the pits for the rest, and everybody at NBC Sports Network was so great and, and really helped me get up to speed. Um, you know, had a decent 500, which was awesome, and then you know, kind of got the unexpected call to do those last three rounds in the 26, which was you know a, a nice kind of bonus to uh, to get a little more seat time. And obviously, in the background the whole time, we're trying to, you know, get pieces in place to try to put something together for this year. Yeah. Yeah. So how how's how's that how's that going, Phil? I haven't, uh, and if you can say if you can say anything. Yeah. So it's it's going. We're we're getting close. You know, it's it's not done yet, which is too bad. Um, you know, we might miss some stuff as a result, but um, we're getting really close to getting it done and. Uh, very confident that we'll have the full season program sorted soon here and okay, we will good. totally announce that soon, which is great. You know, it's like I said, it's literally what we've been working towards since the day we signed the contract for our three race deal last year. Once okay. that was done, it was like, okay, now we got to start working on making this a full time deal. And Jen right. has stepped up. I mean, such an incredible partner, man. They, they signed up. From from first contact to signing the contract was two months, wow. which is, in my experience, proud. absolutely unheard of, especially <laughs> for a company that's never been in motorsports. Then it they was a bit of a coup. Some, it was a big coup, big time. And yeah. then and then they get so excited they sponsor the Texas race. You know, so we have the te we have the Genesis 300 at Texas. We have the Genesis car on track. They get their three races, but all of them were still no fans, right? We couldn't have anybody at Texas. We couldn't have anybody at the GP. And ultimately we didn't have anybody at the 500. And so you've got this company who was, you know, obviously basing a lot of what they're, a lot of what we do with motorsports and sponsorship is hospitality and, and entertainment at the track and whatever. And we weren't able to do any of that. And, and despite all that, they still were like, this was great. This was such a fun program. This was successful already, even without being able to do all that stuff. So we're in even more for next year and we can't wait. So I, those guys are just awesome. They've been incredible to work with, and, and I'm really excited to uh, to get to do more races for them next That's year. Awesome, really happy for you. Like you said, that these 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 partners enable us to do what we love, and you've you've clearly found a great group, and that's 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 really cool. Now, is it is it true that it began with a DM on Instagram? I I, I remember seeing that in like a Marshall Pruitt tweet or something or or a story somewhere. It is 100 percent true. Wow. Um, you know, one of the one of the guys that works uh, at Genesis, who he's not even in the marketing department. He's actually a sales guy, but um, you know, he kind of read that I was I was out of a ride and looking for looking for something, and I guess Genesis had been sort of flirting with the idea of getting into some kind of sports sponsorship. They weren't sure what they wanted to do. 
they're based in San Francisco, but their largest office is actually here in Indianapolis. And so the guy thought, well, hey, this could be a cool opportunity to get involved with the Indy 500 with this guy. And so he sent me a message on, on Instagram and like, I don't know, you've probably got these messages too, man. Like somebody reaches out and says, oh, hey, like I'd like to sponsor you. It'd be cool to get involved. And, and like the guy thinks he can throw you 1500 bucks and it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. and like, that's, that's awesome. And I, and you yeah. know, you appreciate the gesture, but like, it's really not how an IndyCar goes yeah. running. Not for very and long. so, right, right. And so you do, you can do your install <laughs> and then that's about yeah. it. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Voila. So, yeah. So then I, so I reply, he goes, you know, like what interested in getting, you know, local tech company here in Indy interested in getting involved you know, what are some rough budgets? And so I, I wrote him back kind of very straightforward. I was like, Hey man, honestly, it really, really depends on the low end. It's this on the high end. It's this, it kind of depends on what you're looking for and what kind of assets you want, whatever, whatever. And he wrote back and he's like, okay, cool. I'm going to run this up my, to my CMO and I'll get back to you. And I was just like, never going to hear from this guy. Yeah. And he, he messages me back like two days later. And he's like, Hey man, I talked to my CMO about it. And he really liked the idea. You know, the budgets kind of seem like in line with what we're looking at, blah, 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 blah. And I just stared at my phone like, this has got to be a joke. This has got to be a friend of mine that just faked it now or something. Yes, you're also the guy. Exactly. Him him and Thim just sitting there laughing, (laughs) typing away on a fake Instagram account. So I I messaged him back and I was like, he's like, can we like go into a little more detail about the budgets and, and how it works and what you get or whatever? And I was like, well how about I give you my email address and we start communicating with grownups <laughs> and then we can actually have this conversation. And we did. And like I said, that was in mid November and two months later, mid January, we were at a big conference that they held down in Florida back when people held conferences yeah. and, and announced the that deal. And so, cool. so it was, uh, it was amazing how quick it went and it all started with a DM. That's, that's probably, that's, that's probably that's one awesome. of the, either the only or one of the only times that's, that's ever happened. Oh man, yeah. it's gonna it's gonna be like a case study in a motorsports business class one day. Like it's just everybody's crazy. trying to do yeah. it from now on. Yeah. <laughs> well, the best of the best part is a great story. So we make that announcement down, uh, announcing that we've got a partner, and then we announce the team like a month later in Indianapolis. And after the announcement, announcement at the Speedway, a little press conference, and then and then we all went out to a lunch to kind of celebrate. And we're sitting at lunch. And this guy named Nick, who runs all the social for Genesis, he's looking through his phone and he starts laughing. And I'm like, what's so funny? He goes, you're not, oh, because like his phone buzzes and it's an Instagram notification and says, you've just received a direct message from the New Orleans Pelicans, like they're the yeah. NBA team. Sponsors. Right. And so, and so um, they, they had just recruited uh, Zion, right? Oh yeah, like big names and get all this press, and so they sent a message saying, uh, you know, like, hey, just wanted to know if you had any interest in this kind of program. Shooters got to shoot, and then then they had a picture of like Zion with the logo put on the jersey, the Genesis logo. God, what? And we were all like, you know what? Props to them, man. Like somebody at that organization was paying enough attention to the general sports world. That they saw our story, heard like read enough about it to think, all right, let's slide in their DMs and shoot we got to And I just I loved it. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately they did not proceed with the sponsorship of the Pelicans, but still like hundred percent props to those yeah, guys. That's right. pretty funny. I mean, you do see that. I mean, I mean, we're we're looking for sponsors all the time, aren't we, Dalton, for your program and you know, I'm looking at some of these, you know, like some of the RBCs. There's a lot. There is some a lot. Some of the bigger companies. I don't know how big Genesis is, of course, but uh, you know, there are a lot of companies out there that do some cross sport sponsorship, mm-hmm. where they maybe have athletes, maybe uh, I guess. So uh, you know, I guess that's what they're thinking. If they're in that world, they're thinking, well, if they're sponsoring that, maybe they'll sponsor this. Maybe they just they, maybe they weren't trying to steal your sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they, no, I don't think they were trying to steal it. I, I think it's what, what's like you say. I mean, if they're if they're in the sports world now, let's give them another option. Yeah. I think that's yeah. kind of what their approach was, and, and credit to them. So let's switch yeah. gears a bit. Um, oh. We've got a couple. This is something that will that, that actually is kind of nice about doing this sort of live is that we could take questions kind of on on the go. Um, 
So let's let's we got grab a couple. A couple. Um, so from Corey, Corey's at, well, this is more of a request, I guess. He's saying, can can James show us his favorite helmet in his collection from behind him? <laughs> sure. Uh, it is uh, that one, which is a Greg Moore helmet. Oh, nice. And as a lot of you know, Greg's a hero of mine. So that's this, this whole row here is my Canadian row because we've got uh, Patrick Carpentier here, and we've got uh, Paul Tracy here, and then we've got Jacques Villeneuve beside that. Nice. We've got my man Robbie Wickens right here, and then uh, the ledge GM right there. So that's and then and that's that's not doing total um, service to uh, Ron Fellows, who we talked about earlier, who's right there. <laughs> He's also a legend, but I just ran out of room on the Canadian nice. shelf. Oh, and then, Sorry, you went, then you went small on it on the screen. Oh yeah, his yeah. <laughs> with, with, the, with the streaming software, when because I think your internet might be a bit spotty. It, like when when the connection bandwidth goes down, it's like it rescales your video and all that. But uh, okay, I don't know okay. how to. I don't know. No, so that's yeah. a, no, no, that's that's fine. Um, Good collection, yeah, that fella. So Nicole, Marge, and Noah. Yeah, appreciate have, it. Do you ever go back to watch old races for fun or for memories? I, I've been watching the 98 US 500 uh, before going to bed. Oh, <laughs> that one. I mean, if I was going to go back and watch a race, that's the first one I'd pick. Um, I haven't watched that one for a while. I uh, The only time I go back and watch races is, and, you know, Dolan, you mm -hmm. probably do the same thing. It's like watching yeah. video in other sports. You go and watch, you know, last year's St. Pete race before you go to St. Pete and, uh, and things like that. But, no, I, I haven't been uh, I haven't been big into, the, like, the nostalgic races. I mean, I'm running out of stuff to watch on Netflix, so maybe <laughs> that's what we'll have to do <laughs> next. I don't, know, I don't know how Becky's going to feel about it, but I might try. Just, just like play the yeah, audio for the past day, and just like be totally serious. Yeah, this is what this is what we're watching tonight. We're gonna watch Barber in November. I think, <laughs> I, I think that's, I think that's the deal as drivers. You're so caught up in the moment, and this is was, this was me when I was driving. You know, I never really watched anything, and then now that I'm not, you know, yeah, we're watching our catch ups or whatever. But I will go, I'll, I'll go back more now that I've, that I'm not really racing anymore, and for kind sure, of, the kids are liking watching YouTube. Uh, trying to find, you know, something yeah. with me in it. Um, Seeing old videos of dad kicking it. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not very good ones, right? There's not much HD any when I when I was around. But now that right. now, I, I nearly took up because Sebastian, right, Bordet, and I are the, are the same age. Oh, I think he's maybe a year or two younger. And now now he's teammates with Dalton. It's like, oh Christ, I can't even fit in my old racer, <laughs> let alone a race. And he's still racing, but. We used to bang wheels a lot together, so uh, it's it's got kind of kind of funny seeing it, you know being kind of in the same tent as him now. But he's he's a good yeah. boy. But Darren, for sure, do you, do you for did sure. just get your Zwift set up, right? So you're going to be on the bike trainer here soon, aren't you? I did. Don't tell <laughs> anybody. Now you have to do it. <laughs> oh Christ! Well, I, I I keep telling my wife to stop shrinking my jeans because I can't fit in them anymore. But I think he's <laughs> me, I think he's more me growing. So yeah, the doll and you you let me have. The little wahoo things or whatever, so busted my knuckle on the chain set. Uh -oh. Bloody hell! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm with you, man. I've got one of those things too. I'm I'm a runner, not a cycler, but I got one of those things that kind of got guilted into it by the Pit Fit crew, and that's my New Year's resolution is to spend more time on the Zwift. So you and I can hang out at the back while Dalton oh, and TK nice. and Dixon are all flying up front. TK man, he's like, crazy on that. that, that Dalton's is bad. Travel does like a year recap, right? And I think it'll show like how many days active, miles, like elevation, and all that. And like, I think Tony's was 360 days. He he had logged like a a, a workout. Yeah. <laughs> I I Every text day. No, I text him about that. I text him about that. And the five days that were missing were the races yeah. that he did. Like crazy. Unbelievable, unbelievable. The guy's a machine, but you gotta, you gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta train if you wanna be up there, right? You gotta stay fit, but he for sure takes it to uh, another level. <laughs> but yeah, no, we've uh, it's been definitely fun having you on, and like I said, it's uh, this is this is this is you know it's 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 a bit different than the, than the po podcast kind of style. There's there there's definitely more technical hiccups at the start in every episode. It seems. <laughs> There's, there's, there's like the, the like echo uh, could be a meme, right? It's like there's always a comment like, "Oh, Dalton, you're echoing," or, or "Darren's echoing." So, 
So I've not quite got that figured out yet, but one of these days we will have an, an, an episode without any technical glitches. <laughs> yeah. And it kind of all started, Dalton, didn't it, with the uh, with COVID, right? Back in yeah. last at this time last year, nearly March, right? When yeah, was... uh, when we all had to go eye racing and Zoom calls and everything. And all of a sudden, everyone <laughs> ha has a Twitch account, and we were like, "Oh, well, what else could we do with Twitch?" And like, why don't we? Everyone's everyone's doing a podcast. Why don't we do something <laughs> slightly different? <laughs> Yeah, no, I love it, man. I love it. You're making me uh, feel inferior. And I gotta, I gotta call Finn and say, let's buy some cameras. Well, you guys, Go have, you, you guys have a Twitter Fella. account for your show, which we don't have yet. So we do. You're, you're, you're leg up on the social media space for sure. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We gotta do better, Don. Then we might get, yeah. you might get sponsored. That's the, that's there the problem, you know. right? <laughs> So is it going to be? But you've always been a big. Sorry, go ahead, Darren. Sorry, you've been, you've always been big into social media and stuff. I always remember James. Tell tell us a bit of, before we kind of start. We probably should wrap it up quickly soon here. But I, I always remember that Hinge Town. The web, when <laughs> websites and everything in I don't know the early two thousands, late nineties, I guess, when the internet was just kind of getting going and websites and people were trying to figure out how to monetize it. I mean, yeah. was that? Didn't you do something like that? I can't. I can yeah. Think yeah you're not you're not wrong man you're not wrong so basically it was i mean late 90s come on now fella it was mid mid to late 2000s um oh, <laughs> we uh we i was still carding in the late 90s it just started <laughs> so i uh it was, it was like 06 07 i think somewhere around there and it was it was kind of it was time to make a website right because people had websites that's and that's, thinking, yeah. that's something you did and so we were looking at all the drivers' websites we could find, F1, IndyCar, NASCAR, whatever. And I was working with a, a guy at the time, two guys at the time, this group. And um, we came to two conclusions. One, they were all exactly the same. And two, they all sucked. <laughs> so we wanted to just do something different. And so we, we smashed a case of Miller Lite and we came up with this idea of Hinchtown. And I was going to be the mayor of this imaginary internet town. And on the website, it was going to look like a little city. And, like, the news was going to be the Hinchtown Daily Mail. And any video clips would be, like, in the Hinchtown Cinema. And it was, like, all these – like, if you wanted to email the website, you had to go to the post office. You know, it was like this – and so it was, like, a really cool kind of concept that what ended up happening was the whole, like, Hinchtown – just this Hinchtown brand and then the mayor of Hinchtown sort of moniker – really took off more than the website itself did. Okay. And so, you know, I mean, now I'm introduced as the mayor of Hinchtown as often Still. as I am James yeah. Hinchcliffe. Yes. So it, it really yeah. did stick. And we, we were doing things on YouTube before it was like a thing. And we were on Twitter pretty early. We kind of were on the, on the leading edge of the social media stuff and mm -hmm. doing goofy yeah, videos. Video and like when a you're a dog washer or something, I remember seeing, when I was doing <laughs> go-karting, I'm like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that one, that one, I got a, I got an excuse for that one. That was actually my sister's business okay. that she had opened up in Burlington. Ah, there you go. So I was helping my sister out on that one. But yeah, back when you're an Indy Lights driver, you've got nothing but the time, yeah. right? So in between races, I was just doing these goofy little videos and stuff. And uh, and yeah, so yeah, they, it, it served me very well. And the, the Hingetown brand's, you know, kind of grown out of that, which is pretty cool. There you go. Creativity is, you know, definitely a big part of trying to making a brand stick right and also timing and 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 a bit of luck and time's huge go. for sure oh no, that's really cool so like i guess i will probably wrap it up here don't want to drag this on all night but james thanks for thanks for coming on and being our our, our first guest for 20 of course guys hope to see you on the grid fella and get you back out there yeah i really appreciate it guys thanks so much for having me on and uh yeah we'll see you on the yeah, track to a, to a more normal year this year that's what we're hoping for yeah <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right, All right guys. guys. Take care, lads. Cheers, James. Cheers, Bye. Don.